Thank you very much. Good morning and welcome to what is the last Right Stuff of the Week. I'm Matthew Wright. It's the... Oh, get over it. It's a bank holiday. It's the 27th of August, the start of the bank holiday weekend when lots of young people head off to teeny bopper festivals in places like Leeds and Reading, while grey hairs like me are going to be gathering on the Isle of Wight for Hawkfest. Uh, always fun, but this year I've got a new way to amuse myself when it gets dark. It is this. Glow in the dark bog roll. <laughs> Perfect for late night trips to the poo <laughs> to the poo pit. It's not very glowy though, is it? <laughs> now this year has seen some colourful new developments in the dank dark world of festival toilets after some wide-eyed space cadets decided to chuck coloured glow sticks down the trenches to illuminate um, proceedings. Oh. And <laughs> as you can see from the YouTube footage, they don't half look good, well a lot, lot better than it looks without them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> now then, leaving festivals to one side for a moment, let's turn our attention to fashion. Everyone knows what leggings are, right? Yeah? Leggings? Yeah. Skin-tight, lycra-based apparel for your leggies. Now there are at least three new designs on the market, but can the fashionable folk on the panel figure out what they are? First of all, we've got the comic Dominic Holland, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This, is, this is a man... He treats fashion like a religion, which is why he goes everywhere in Jesus sandals. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matthew, you, you, you missed the opportunity because I... I this, there you go, look. No, uh, those are trainers. Oh, dear. <laughs> now, nice legs. Now, do you know what treggings are? Treggings? I... I... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> treggings. Treggings are trouser leggings. They are broader... There they are. Have a look. Look and learn. They right. are wider than leggings. Uh, and that's what I can tell you about them, really. They're treggings, well, trouser leggings. Because your show, Matthew, is populated by young things, your researchers, and they're all ultra-trendy, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they all wear things I look at and think, you know what, I just couldn't get anywhere near no, 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 that. No, 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 no. And they look at you and you just yeah. think, thank God I'm not Dominic Holland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, our next thing, Johnny Ellis, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I can see you nodding. You know what treggings are. Do you know what jeggings are? Yeah, they're a kind of very tight jean-based oh, legging. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, 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 we've got a picture. We've got a picture. They are, there yeah. they are. No, yeah. they're not great, are they, really? Well, uh, our uh, production secretary wears them, so you want to be careful what you say, because well, uh, she'll stab no, you in the back. Well, a lot of people look great in them, but I always think they're the kind of thing that you'd look greater in something else. They just look, whoa, they're very tight. Yes, <laughs> they, are, they are. They leave nothing to the imagination. But at least the they're not as scary as Dominic's shorts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking of leaving nothing to the imagination, our special guest this morning, he's back. It's the comic Scott Capurro, ladies and gentlemen. Do you, know what, do you know what meggings are? Uh, I think you're going to tell me, and it's going to make <laughs> you'll me like sad. It, you'll like really? it. You'll like it. Really? It's men in leggings. They're men leggings. They are. They are leggings for men. Where's the Where's the picture of that? There. Oh. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's tights. It's yeah. Medieval tights, <laughs> right? For, for men, meggings. Right. Yeah. Have you ever, ever worn anything like that? I do, uh, but normally under other clothes. Oh right. That put a smile on your face. Uh, yeah. You know? Now, how come you're not in Edinburgh this year? Um, because I have travel plans, I've been going elsewhere, and because I, I, I'd like to have a future instead of blowing all my money in Edinburgh in August and having a £10,000 bill by the end and losing my house. Because you're, you're, you're going to be in Camden this weekend, Yeah, right? in the London. Camden Fringe. Which yeah. is a sort of alternative festival for people who don't want to go north of the border. Yeah, I guess it's for poor people, the kind of people that have to go to places like, you know, Brighton for their stag parties. Like, they can't afford nice places, so they have to stay local. And uh, it's like that. So, yeah, it's So, Camden. you're doing two nights, Saturday and Sunday night. Yeah. At the Camden, Camden Head. Head. OK. Yeah. Oh, I won't be wearing leggings or meggings or, <laughs> or bikings or any of that, though. I don't know why people wear stuff like that, because it just makes them look fatter. Yeah, yeah, well, unless you're really thin. Yeah, but then it looks kind of terrible. Scott, I'm trying to plug your show. Oh, sorry, right. yes, yes. So well, I'll right, be right. Uh, talking about, you know, whatever. Special guests? Are you, is it like, because uh, it's called Scott Kapura Opens Up? Right, right, yeah. Okay. Oh, I just heard a moan from the yes. back. I guess, I guess he's seen it. <laughs> uh, do you, so you have celebrity guests? Oh, no, that's the chat show that starts again on September 30th at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern. This is just me alone on the weekend oh, here. alone? Yes, all by myself. You, you won an award at Edinburgh, didn't you, years ago? I Guess did, you come, a yeah. long time ago. Yeah. For a show that would never win an award now, I think. It was kind of a coming-of-age story about me coming out, coming out on stage and why I did that. And I don't think that anything that sort of self-referential and and Moody would, would win anything now. I think it's all kind of like people that want to jump on the TV, you know, onto that bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. so... Um, I'm told you had, um, you got some free medical advice at one of your recent stand-ups from a nurse. She told me I was autistic. She was in the, fr <laughs> in the front row, and I was, I was probably hitting on her husband or boyfriend or whatever, and um, she said, you know, I think you have a bit of autism. I'm a nurse, and I think you should 
probably go see a doctor. And the whole room kind of went quiet for a minute. And I think I am a bit autistic, actually. I think a lot of performers are. I think we're really tunnel visioned. If that's what autism is, I don't really know. Uh, it's not, I don't think she meant I was retarded. Not that that's a bad thing. Right. But I think that she meant that I was kind of like a bit not able to sort of know what was going on around. I don't know what she meant, actually. See, no, that's, that's, that's more strong. like it. I think it's very right. offensive. Joe, that's quite a profound heckle. That is a very, yeah, that's you know, normally just get off, you're not very funny, but you yeah, yeah, autism. Yeah, thanks for that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I know, but I mean, you know, well, look, my relationship with my audience is very personal, Dominic, it's very intimate, and um, I think she felt... Not as intimate as you'd like it to be. Right. Crazy, <laughs> Sometimes it gets, yeah. And I think uh, maybe more Megan's it would be, but I think that she wants, she was trying to, like, guide me. Women love gay men, and they think that we require their assistance and advice. I think, I think uh, gay men listen. That's what the mistake we make is. And then women just keep talking because they have a lot to say. And um, she wanted to share. So I was there to, uh, you know, whatever. I think that um, it was sweet of her to tell me that I was a bit okay. crazy, I think is what she meant. Now, you're, you're a political animal. Uh, what do you think of our coalition government? Are you a Clegg or a, a Cameron man? Well, I like Clegg because he wanted to give amnesty to all the illegal uh, immigrants. I thought that was a great idea. And great for the British economy, too. But now he's turned his back on that. I, I just think that the Lib Dems are disappointed and leaving in droves and joining the Labour Party, and I think it's a mess. I just, I, I'm not a, a fan of the Tories. I think they're mean, and I think they're showing it currently. That whole milk thing rose again. But it's not a Tory government, it's a coalition it, government. You don't have a government at all, it's pretty much Belgium. You guys don't really have... <laughs> it's I, not that bad. <laughs> you, you, uh, well, I just don't think anyone's sure what's going to happen in the future, which is, I think, damaging the economy. I think as soon as everyone knows what's going to happen, and uh, how much money you've actually lost. I, I just, I, it's weird to me that the government keeps punishing the British, saying, oh, you're bad, you tried to improve your own personal wealth. How dare you? <laughs> and uh, now they're taking everything back. Yes. I, I just think the economy, a lot of it's based, the growth of it, at least on people's own confidence. And people aren't spending now because they're being told daily, hourly, how horrible things are and how it's going to get much worse. And you guys seem to thrive under that sort of... We do, we do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that underdog mentality well, that we have. We need to be thing. beaten. Yeah. You yeah. guys, you love a hot plate being on a bus all stuck together. One, one last thing. I've, I've got, I've got... Then the kumbaya guitar comes <laughs> out. You're... We are the world. <laughs> <laughs> one last thing, one last thing. The researchers are telling me that you write or have written to a murderer, is that right? Yeah, Eric yeah, yeah, yeah. He and his brother Lyle murdered their parents in their home in Beverly Hills. Really? Yeah, yeah. They'd had and enough. Why, 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 do you, why do you write to them? Uh, I only write to Eric, not why, Lyle. Why? Lyle has a toupee, I'm not interested. I write to Eric. <laughs> well, he had a toupee until they flushed it down the toilet. Oh, prison's so hard. But I write to him. I write to Eric. Uh, is this the famous case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's... The rich parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and the rich kids. Right. Became much richer when the parents were dead. Funny yeah. how that happens. And then, um, and then they bragged about it. And people thought, huh, they have new cars and their parents are dead. Connection? And then they, <laughs> they found the evidence. But um, they did. They, they blew them away with, with uh, rifles. I think the problem was, for me, that the boys were being misrepresented in the press. I could tell. And, um, and I was interested in what the true story was. And I just thought, if I write to a convicted killer, I wonder what he'll say. And, uh, <laughs> what did they say? Uh, Eric was very open. He, actually, his first letter was like, sorry I didn't respond, but I've been busy. You know what it's like. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> No, my parents are both still alive, but, but go on. And, um, and, and it was quite camp, the letter. It was like high cursive with exclamation points and a happy face at the end. And I thought, huh, this might be my way into prison. Yeah. Well, they were seen as evil, but then it came out during the trial that they'd been abused as children. Oh. And, you know, although I was never abused by my, my father, you know, I wanted to know more the intimate details okay. of what his day-to-day -day life in prison was like. That's okay. what I was interested okay. in. Okay. Well, then I go. wanted to, I, want, I wrote a play okay. about it, and then it was fun. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does it have a killer ending? <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave that there. And tell the folks at home what we've got in store for you today, because after the break, I want to know what you think of the charity using Psycho Killer Rao Moat for a billboard campaign against animal cruelty. Council officials ordered one of the posters to be removed from a shopping centre in Moat's hometown. How would you feel if they stuck one up where you live? After that, it's Scott with the rest of today's headlines. Our first phone-in. Is it offensive to ask someone if they've got an all-over tan? A friend? Well, maybe not. But what about a work colleague? Would that be a no-no? Is it too personal? 
If someone did ask you if you got an all over tan and you didn't like it, I want to know what you'd do about it. Would you tell them, I don't like it? Would you ignore it? Or would you run off to your line manager and file a complaint? The reason I'm talking about this is there's a legal wrangle going on over just this question right now, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, after that, we're going to find out if you can tell if someone is dirty in bed just by looking at them. Uh, Kirsty and I have been discussing this backstage now for weeks. Uh, I have a theory, you see. It's the ones who look like butter wouldn't melt in their mouth who are the most depraved, whereas the ones who put it all on display and dress like they're invariably up for it aren't. So, what do you think? And finally, we're going to be talking telly with this man, the Sunday Rose TV critic, Kevin O'Sullivan. How are you, Kevin? Hello, Matthew. Good to see you. Now, quite a busy week for the end of things. Would that be right? What have you got for us? Yeah, a uh, very packed agenda this week. We're obviously going to be talking about the X Factor. We're going to be saying goodbye to the bill and the very last of the <laughs> summer wine. Cross, sob, sob, sob. <laughs> We'll be having a look at Dawn French's newish sitcom, Roger and Val have just got in. Channel 5's very own Britain's Ugliest Models. I we'll... turned that part down. Uh, uh... <laughs> well, you were a natural for I it, know, mate. I know, I know. Mean, I, I, put, I, I put you forward and what <laughs> happened? You know, you let me down. Um, we're going to be having a look at, uh, a look forward at Beauty and the Beast, a controversial Channel 4 programme. I've still got a chance of getting in that. Uh, yeah, uh, which part? <laughs> Beast. <laughs> Beast, every day of the week. Um, we'll be taking a look at Dexter, the uh, nice guy serial killer. Oh, yeah. uh, I look forward to Cat and Alfie's return to okay, okay. Uh, EastEnders and, of course, The Inbetweeners, my favourite sitcom. OK. Lots of stuff to get through. If you want to take part in any of our discussions, here's Clean Cut Kirsty with all the numbers. Kirsty. Thank you, Matthew. If you'd like to contact the show this morning, the number to call, as usual, is 0207 173 Calls will set you back a maximum of 10 pence a minute. Remember, that is based on a BT landline call, so mobile phone charges and other networks may vary. You can email us, write stuff at 5.tv. If you'd like to send a text, the number is 800 Text will cost 25 pence, plus your standard network work charge. Not all messages will be shown on screen and please always remember to put TWS before your comments. And of course, if you're on cool and on Twitter, if you are cool and on Twitter, you can tweet us twitter.com forward slash fight right stuff. Thanks for that, Kirsty. After the, after the break, though, we're asking if this charity is wrong to use Raoul Moat to warn others about animal cruelty. I can see a few problems with it. You see, one, more than half the country thinks Moat's a hero. Uh, two, there's no conclusive proof he was mean to animals. And three, that poster might just upset Sam Stobart, who moat critically injured, not to mention the families of Chris Brown and David Rathband, who he murdered and blinded respectively. Still, if it stops people being mean to cats... And more on this after the ads. Well, moats had convictions for animal cruelty. Is this true or is it false? Find out after the break. <laughs> 